Hello and good morning, Emily. Hi, Arrow. How are you? Doing doing fantastic. Really excited <laughs> to talk with you because this book is coming out at a really interesting time in history where people are on separate sides, but they're not having these conversations that, that Gabe and Annabelle are doing. Yes, that is for sure. <laughs> but see, don't you think that this book could inspire that change, though? Uh, yes, that's, that is definitely my hope. Um, I think that, you know, I, I think one of my favorite stories from, from writing this book is... Um, one of the, um, I'm, I live in D.C., and at my son's school, one of the moms who had read the book said that this should be required reading yep. for, um, for Hill staffers, because she had actually fell in love with her husband. She's read that um, when they were both on the Hill, and back in the day, they used to, you know, you would argue all day, then you would get beer, and then you would play on the same softball team, and the next day, you know, you had, you know, deals being made uh, or relationships starting, and now that does not happen. There's none of that. Um, you don't talk to anyone from the other side. You don't grab a beer. And so just think of all the lost romances that have occurred because of this divide. That is so true. And you make Annabelle and Gabe feel so real. Is, is that because of your, your psychology and your psychotherapy background? Because, I mean, it just they're so real, but it's almost like, it's like, how did she make them so like us? So I think I think it's um, a real advantage being a writer and a therapist because you know usually uh, we don't get to hear people's internal worlds. Um, I could be in the worst mood, but you know if I if I'm speaking to somebody, you know if I'm speaking to a barista at Starbucks or if I'm speaking to a parent at school, I'm going to have my game face on and be pleasant. But when you're in session with someone, you hear everything they're thinking from from the most absurd to the saddest, and that really allows for such great character development when you're writing. I like the way that you, you talk about the small town because, I mean, over the past, let's say, eight to ten years, this small town feeling has really taken sides as well. And I, I can see it around the Charlotte area in the smaller towns, how everybody is on their side of the fence and they're not really getting along with each other all the time. Right. And that's, and I, it's a fictional town in the South, but it was kind of loosely based on the research triangle idea where you have the small town, North Carolina, in the book, which is, again, fictional, but half the town, because of a research... Um, university and a hospital yeah. there's half the town the east side is liberal and then it's the south and so the north side is is conservative and these sides try to have nothing to do with each other but what are the spaces that bring us together and in gabe's case that was a running team a lot of young adults they have their opinions but they don't know how to use their opinions i think this is going to right. be a great teaching tool in the way of them saying hey i'm either gabe or i'm annabelle and yeah. I, I want to be able to talk to somebody about this without being judged Absolutely. I see so much in my practice. People are, especially college students, they're cutting relationships off with people because of how they think, what they post on social media. And, and plenty of uh, grown-ups are doing this. You know, even, even like 50 and 60-year-olds are doing this. And this has really become kind of commonplace now to not be able to really even be friends with someone who thinks right. differently. And I think there's a lot lost there. Yeah, and to me, that's where ghosting came from. And, and, I, and I sat there and yeah. I kept wondering, is, if, is Gabe going to ghost her? I mean, because, I mean, we, or would <laughs> Annabelle ghost Gabe? Yeah, yeah. Probably Annabelle would be more likely. I think she's more hot-headed. Gabe's a little more. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you feel while you were putting those words together? Because, I mean, it has to move through you first before it arrives in our eyes. Yeah, I, I think there were some parts that were challenging and like that, you know, when, when your characters think differently than you do, that can be really challenging. But, you know, that's where I think the power of, you know, the power of like romance comes in and the power of these shared spaces that have nothing to do with politics where you can see and understand where someone's coming from. Uh, and so, you know, I think the mix of these like romance tropes where you have this idea that, you know, somebody, the, the power of falling in love, but what happens when you think so differently and I just think that's such an interesting dynamic to work through and it, I think it definitely helped me kind of even speak to my friends who think differently in a different way and try to really understand them in a more open open-minded way one of the 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 title of the book really uh, caught my attention because in so many different ways there could be different definitions because running mates could be there on two different sides of the political fence mm -hmm. running mate means they're out there running together Right. And in this case, both work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just thought that was very clever as to how you're doing that. Because once you dive into those pages and you see what it's about, then you go, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know where we're going with this. Yeah, yes, definitely. And like, that was, I think the first title was something like the um, Lost Art of Manners. And then they were like, that's not catchy enough. And then, you know, I think it was a brainstorm. Uh, my agent and me and, uh, and the publisher all, like, kind of finding the right title, which, which you know, even though writing is a solo, solo sport, and, you know, there's so many people who help. It's really a team effort at the end.
a solo sport, but yet when you get two runners together, they've got a lot of things to talk about. That is for sure. <laughs> I think it's because they're up there in their head so much while they're out there running around that they've just got to get it out with somebody. <laughs> yes, yes. And then after running, you're in a good mood. It's good for mental health, so you can argue less while you're talking about hard uh, hard choices. Maybe that's the key. We should have everyone like run 10 miles and they can argue. They'd probably get along better. So many listeners and readers are going to really see themselves inside these storylines in the way that, you know, they, they inside their mind, they are an activist. And they want to see some activism. But what, where can they go to even learn more about this? Because there's so many people that want the younger generation to use their voice. Yeah, I think I think you want to think like I think it's so great that the younger generation does want to use their voice. And I think they have more platforms than ever. I think social media, which has benefits and, you know, um, bad and good like everything else you know you can through social media you could be live in a place that maybe you you know not a major tv or radio town and still be really heard and like whether it's on youtube or on your instagram channel you know i think more than ever there are these ways we can get our voices heard but i think the the, the trapping is is that how do we make sure we can hold our own views and talk about our own views but not totally shut out other right. other points of views even if they are very different and maybe even feel threatening yeah, yeah, because it's even a, a, a fearful journey if you're even going to be on social media. Because I mean, it's yeah. it's all there, but you know, do you want to be a part of that crowd? Right, right, and 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 there's a, a lot of harm from social media too. So it's so ooh. complicated. Ooh, ooh. So now to get into this storyline, how did you measure the balance in it? Because I mean, that's what I love about this is that there there is that your editor that did that, or I mean, how did you keep it so well balanced? Well, I think I you know I'm a huge lifelong um, romance. Okay. lover and reader and romance novels actually have pretty clear guidelines that I don't think everyone knows about like to, to really be a romance you have to have the, the two love interests on the page every 10 pages they have to be together oh, wow. also there's usually a third act breakup and usually there's always a happily ever after and I think you know writing this book made me really understand why that's so important because just as you don't want to get you know at the end of the day you want people to be in the romance and the comedy and the way to do that is to keep the tension between the characters it's exciting usually tension is threatening right usually if people are not uh, getting along it makes you uncomfortable but in this case it's adding to the romance appeal so you know i think that's the real balance which is it's it's, it's almost exciting when they disagree because there's some other you know sexual tension there instead of it just being awkward see i like tension and i like conflict and the thing is is i'll dive into it as a writer and now i've got to figure out how am i going to find some peace here as well right right oh but it gets inside your own person well, I, I guess be you being a psychotherapist i mean hey i guess you just take care of yourself yeah well i mean i i think i i'm also a runner i'm not a i'm not a Anne and grave are like fabulous runners i just run three miles very slowly and i read a lot of romance and um I, I eat a lot of chocolate chip cookies, but I also think that, you know, moving back to D.C., um, I've been around a lot of people who think differently than me again, and I, I realize, I think, something that's powerful is that I can also learn from the way other people do things, yeah. um, and that that makes me a better therapist, and it makes me a better mom, and it makes me a better writer, so I think that's been really powerful, too. What is your writing discipline? All right, so I'm, I, I have two small boys, and I work full-time, so I'm, <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I do. I would never recommend this for mental health because it's bad for mental health. I write between uh, 10 p.m. and 12.30 or 1 a.m., and I do that by eating M&Ms and espresso <laughs> the whole time. So, um, I, again, I do not recommend that as a therapist, but it is effective for a writing mom who has a full-time job. Um, and I think, you know, writing we just when you're writing the discipline like people really want it to be romantic inspiration here i go but that is not true it's like anything else it, you have to put your butt in a chair and kind of produce a certain amount of words or pages a day yeah. and so you know that that's kind of the reality and i think m&ms are a great way to motivate <laughs> i know a lot of musicians that do exactly what you do and they, they yeah. say i'm I, you know i, I want to write at night that, that's where my energy is given birth yeah yeah or the, in my case, more the only time I have. But I, I definitely recommend trying to sleep more than I've slept in the last year. <laughs> but it, it's, it's been worth it. <laughs> when did you start to realize that Gabe and Annabelle were starting to respect each other? And, and to me, it's, it's at that perfectly balanced timing when, when it really starts to click. Yeah, I think so. At first, you see that they can't really tolerate right. their, their, the pressure of their friends and family. They feel almost too embarrassed to really be together. And that when that shifts, when they're willing to still be together despite kind of pressures from family or friends, is, is a shift that they're prioritizing each other and also really feeling more confident in themselves to make decisions they think are true to who they want to be rather than who, who the people they're around are pushing them to do. Wow. So do you make this a 10-part binge watch or are you going to do a rom-com here? 
I I think I'm I think I'm going I might go back because there's some side characters who have who should have other stories. But really? I'm 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 I think my next novel is also going to be a romantic comedy, but in a different setting with a new cast, at least for now. See, I like that kind of thinking because I mean, with it, when you when you bring people into the storyline, and it's it's almost like the reader gets to see them, shake hands, okay, I'll never see him again. So yeah, continuing on with a story like that gives you a series. Yes. Yes, exactly. And there are there are some side characters who I know people really want stories for. That's been some of the feedback, so especially Sam and Dell, who are like the best friends, and Mason. People really want to see them have their own romances, and maybe one day they will, because everyone deserves a happy ever after. Wow. I would love to see the research on how many grown men will find this book, and they will read it. Oh, I have a, okay, so my, my husband's a lawyer, and his friends only read nonfiction, but because this was my book, they all read it. And it was their first, literally, they read biographies, war biographies, you know, the Constitution, whatever they read. They've never read a rom-com. And they were so funny reading this book because they were texting me about it nonstop. See? They thought it was so romantic. Mm-hmm. They never, they never, they, they, they thought it was much more like, you know, they're not used to books with this level of sexual tension, even though it's very PG-13. So it was so funny watching them particularly digest running mates. <laughs> We're all still just kids. We never really yes. grow up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so where can people go to find out more about you, Emily? Because I want them to really get into what you're doing. Yeah. So I have a website, and if you just Google Emily Locker Author, it'll pop up. Um, and there's a way you can email me on that. And also, I'm on Instagram, and you can always DM me, and I will, I will do my best to always answer. Um, I love talking about romance and therapy and empathy and all these topics. I love it. you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I would love that. Thank you, Arrow. Well, be brilliant, and thank you so much for sharing your writing and not hiding it underneath your bed. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, and thanks for having me.